Hi, in this video we're going to see what's new in SXA 1.9. With the release of Cycle 9.2 and SXA 1.9 comes a lot of new features that are absolutely amazing and really do create a much better experience. So let's get started. The first thing that I think a lot of people have already done using workarounds and using the data uh, tags is assigning a background image. So let's say for example what I want is a promo with a background image. Previously, what I had to do is actually go to the rendering variant and maybe associate a specific image, but now you can have that out of the box. So, as you can see, this is my promo here, and you can see that there is a background image to it here. You remember, we usually did that by going into the rendering variants, and then maybe adding a new one. That would have a div tag with a style attribute and so on, right? This is how we used to do it previously. But now you can easily do it out of the box as you can see here. And there are other features as well with that. So you can actually choose Firstly, the background image and the stretch mode, whether it's fixed background, parallax, stretch, stretch vertical and uh, tile horizontally, tile vertically and stretch horizontally, and so on. So it's pretty, pretty nice. Now, let's see how we do it. So by default, this is not actually available. And all you need to do to ultimately enable it is you need to add template foundation experience accelerator presentation background image as a base template. So We'll go to our templates, feature, experience accelerator, page content, promo, and from here we just need to add the background image as a base template. Again, I would never recommend to actually update directly in an out of the box component like I did here, but you probably need to clone it and then do that. And there is a really nice documentation around how you do that. So the documentation updates are really quite good. They help me a lot understand all the steps you need to do. The second thing is the component wizard. Now, I usually wouldn't use that, quite honestly, because I usually go for ultimately cloning uh, existing components. Even in most scenarios, you can clone one and then even update everything in it. But it's still... An available feature where you can just go into the renderings so I go to layout renderings feature and from here you have now something called insert component with this wizard uh, icon ultimately what this does is you can add the component name so choose where you want it to be of course don't put it in the experience accelerator folder it's recommended to actually create your own folder here to the rendering view, its data source, its behaviors like background image support and all these other behaviors. This is quite nice because all the steps that you usually had to remember when creating a custom controller and a custom SXA component are now done for you ultimately using this wizard. So it's quite interesting and quite nice. You'll find that I've added all the different documentation URLs as well here just for you to go back to it and get the values in case you need to. Now this is probably my favorite new feature with uh, JSS support of course which is use, use a rule to select the page design. So previously you had to either cho choose the page design per page or for a specific template. So you can either go into a specific page like here and select its page design and set it manually. Or you had the ability to go to presentation, page designs, and then select for a specific template, the template to design mapping. Both features are quite nice, but 
there are scenarios where you wanted to create a rule based on specific field or based on, based on specific location you want a specific page design to be assigned to that page so let's take an example i have my landing pages here so i have this landing page campaign one and i can have others here and i want them to automatically not have the header because it doesn't really make sense in my campaign pages to have the menu bar and the logo and so on i could do that of course by creating a specific template for these pages and use the design mapping but using the new capabilities of Sitecore and SXA 1.9 you can actually do that using the rule so as you can see here now it doesn't really make sense to have a campaign with a menu and header and all that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my page designs and I'm going to edit these rules and say if it's the landing pages or any of its descendants then select the no header page design and as soon as I save and refresh my campaign you can see that the header has gone now this is a very simplistic scenario but I'm sure you can come up with much more advanced scenarios based on a specific field value or if a specific field is empty. I've always needed to do that in my news and article pages where if it didn't really have a title or a subtitle, maybe I want to change a bit in how the page design looks or if it doesn't have related items, I don't want it to be a two column with a sidebar that's empty. All these capabilities are now available using such capability ultimately or this feature. So it's pretty great actually and again documentation for it is here now this is one of the great capabilities that have been added and honestly i've been waiting for for quite a long time which is the ability to man gss apps with sxa so you can see here i have this sxa tenant i also have a gss tenant here and you do this by just inserting same way you would insert an sxa tenant you can just insert a gss tenant and within that tenant you can add again a gss site this helps you manage all your gss application from this single location and enables you to do partial designs for your gss app all the great capabilities that we've been using in sxa ultimately are now available in gss apps as well so that's pretty nifty the next one is configure rendering variants so that they are available in partial designs and composites now, previously, when you were able to define an allowed templates for rendering variant, you could only define it as a specific page, right? So if we go to my rendering variants, I need to go back to my SX8 tenant. If we go to the rendering variants, and let's say, for example, we take the pro. When you click on a rendering variant you can see that allowed in templates before it only has here the names of the pages that are available now it has composites as well as partial design so you can do things like have a specific navig header navigation that's only available in the partial design so i have here default and header navigation as you can see and i've said that the header navigation should only be available in the partial design now if I start going into Sitecore and going into a page and maybe add a navigation, maybe I want to add a sidebar navigation or something like that, I don't want to allow the content editor to have the header navigation as an option, right? And now you can actually do that. So you can see here, it doesn't show header navigation, but if I go to my partial design, open it in experience editor you can see I have header navigation available here so that's I think really really nice because it enables you instead of having to clone maybe the navigation or, or your composite just to put 
a specific version that no one else can edit or no one can change, you can now just do it out of the box using this capability of assigning a rendering variant to a partial design or composites. Canonical URL meta rendering has been added. This allows you to add canonical URLs for pages that can appear on multiple sites. Now, let me show you how this is done. Actually, it's quite easy as well. So again, I'll go to my partial designs and I'll go to my metadata. And you can see here link rel canonical, canonical with the URL. And it's here, so you can just add in the head a canonical URL. Now, the last one is actually quite interesting because there are two parts to it. The first part was not actually documented as part of the release notes, or I couldn't find it, which is the addition of encode facet value and get asset configuration. The second part is a new pipeline have been introduced to extend the rendering of search results with injected models. Let's take these one by one. So I'll take the one that has been documented, which is there is a new pipeline now that's actually items. And what this processor does is ultimately just takes the uh, creates search items from the actual search result as new search item and the search item has actually item and model what this ultimately does as it says in the description here is it injects the model within the search item so that you can use it within your rendering variant and for encode facet value and get asset configuration these are the new processors uh, as it says in the documentation that the encode facet value pipeline is used in search logic to encode escape facet values which are sent to the search providers so for example if you have special characters for azure or solar search uh, you can really configure them or change them using the processor here and get asset configuration of course is a processor that has uh, well it's uh, a pipeline that has a set of processors, disable asset optimization, which overrides uh, configuration for the purpose of creative exchange, request asset optimization disabled, a setting that lets the user disable asset uh, optimization per request, check page designs items, which validates the page design item for context site, get global settings and get site settings. Now, these are the main new features I think for SXA 1.9 but Psycore as well comes with or Psycore 9.2 comes with great new features one that I really love is within the experience optimization you can see now active personalized experiences which shows you all the current active personalizations that are running but also the personalization suggestion which uses Psycore Cortex to identify segments that re respond better to a different experience than the test winner and this enables you or ultimately suggests for you personalization scenarios. Thank you for watching the new features of SXA 1.9.